reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As disciples of Jesus, we're called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, praying and fasting, sacrificial giving, and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Today, you are invited to come over to the church between 1 and 2, and later between 6 and 7, and have ashes put on your forehead. With these words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This is a reminder from Genesis 2. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The difference between us and dust is a little water that came upon the earth and the breath of life within us. Pretty humbling, huh? Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Traditionally, Lent is a season of repentance and sacrifice, a time of self-examination and almsgiving, prayer and fasting. It's a time of reading and meditating on God's holy word. Lent is like a restart button on our lives, a chance for a do-over, to make amends, to turn around, to make a right beginning a time to straighten out our relationship with God. 
We think of Lent as a time of prayer and fasting. But what did we just hear in Isaiah? The people said, why do we fast but you don't even see? Why humble ourselves when you don't even notice? God just shook his head and responded, look, you serve only your own interest on your fast day. And while you're fasting, you oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? If you want to do something for me, this is the fast that I would choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke, to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house. When you see the naked, to cover them and to not hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. So what kind of fast will this Lent be? What will you give up or take on? You know, chocolate or beef, caffeine or cookies, injustice, oppression, hunger. About 30 years ago, Bill and I took on the diet for a small planet during Lent. We knew that by choosing foods that were higher on the food chain, we were actually robbing others of the food they needed to live. Our eating habits had global implications. So we began eating lower on the food chain, and we continue much of that diet today. We heard in Matthew, whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by others. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who's in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Walter Brueggemann, an Old Testament scholar, said that praying in private is important because you can be brutally honest with God. How many of us think of that? You can plead your case with whatever words are real to you uncensored, like the prophets of old who argued with God, we too can be forthright with God. When I pray in public, I'm concerned about how I sound or my words right. What will others think of my prayer? When I pray in private, I begin, hey God, like I'm talking to a close friend. And then I have a conversation with God. When we pray in private, we can have an intimate, no-holds-barred conversation with God. Just like Moses on the mountain or Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus promised us in John 1.12, to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, that we are a child of God. We are heirs. You and I have that exact same connection with God. We are a child of God and can make our needs known so we can address God intimately, just like Jesus did. We can tell God in the most direct way, Hey, God, you ask us to do this work. Help us help you. We are here feeding the hungry, 
providing dignity through interface shelter. We clothe your people. God, you know we do this work because this is the fast, the work that you put into our hearts. God, you yourself ask us to help the poor. You know this. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this Lent, take your needs, the needs of this community to God in prayer and fasting. Heaven knows that God is busy, but don't let up. Allow God to help this community do his work here in this place. Now, God is a mighty God, but works usually through people. And we can sometimes be the weakest link. Sometimes people don't move on God's command. Sometimes our ear is not tuned to the God channel. God, make haste to help us. I urge this community to keep pounding on the door, just like Jesus told about the neighbor who kept pounding on the neighbor's door until the neighbor finally got up and gave him what he wanted. So this Lent, let us take on the practice of intimate conversation with God. Be frank with God. Be persistent, like that three-year-old who won't stop nagging until he gets what he wants. Let us pray. Hey, God, you know our needs, but we are placing them before you. It is our great joy to do your work from this place, to feed those who are hungry and clothe those who are cold, to listen to those who are discouraged, to give joy to your children, to sing your songs, to give praise and thanks to you, to be your presence in this place. Sustain us in this work, we pray. And in the name of your Son, our brother and Savior, amen.